Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be back to make this video for you because honestly, if I didn't pass this particular exam that I'm going to be talking to you about, I would not be making this video and I'd probably be back to the books and studying, but I passed. So, uh, so many of you surprisingly loved my video on passing the Canadian securities course, which I did in October, November, or yeah, it's something like that. September, October. I don't know. It feels like 12 years ago, but it was literally just a few months ago. And so I'm thrilled that you love that video and keep on watching and asking me questions. If you're going to take the exam, definitely watch that video. I've got some great tips because I literally just did it not too long ago. But as I am personally on my journey to become a CFP, uh, I thought why not document the process making a new video every time I've successfully uh, passed one of the exams. Um, because honestly, there's not a ton on YouTube specifically about this. Um, and I thought I can just share my kind of two cents, especially when things are fresh in my mind, which they are because I literally just passed one of the exams today, like literally a few hours ago. And then I got my hair and makeup ready so I can make this beautiful video for you and your entertainment and knowledge. So uh, this video is all about how to pass financial planning one FP1 through the CSI. So um, I'm taking a particular path to become a CFP. I'm actually not 100% sure whether I will become a QAFP and then take the bridge program to be a CFP. Haven't decided what I want to do. We will see. But no matter what, um, if you're going through the CSI, uh, the Canadian Securities Institute, the process is kind of the same. You do have to do a couple core uh, courses and exams before you can kind of go on either path. So FP1 is one of the courses that you need to do. And I just finished the exam. And honestly, good news, guys, it is a so much easier than the CSC, but also it is actually just in general pretty easy. It will make you feel so good and smart once you actually like open up the textbook, read all of it and take the exam. You're like, oh my gosh, this is a cakewalk, cakewalk. So uh, I still have some really important things to share because I mean, people do fail. So uh, stick around, watch this video, find out how you too can pass FP1 through the CSI. So to give you some context, I registered for FP1 uh, in November of 2020. So literally just, I think like a few days after I finished the CSC, um, because I was like, all right, let's do this. My, my kind of uh, thought process was if I passed the CSE, which I really didn't think I was going to do, uh, I was then going to bite the bullet and go for it, become a certified financial planner. Um, and so I did. And so I'm like, well, I guess, I guess this is it. I think we better get going. I'm not getting any younger. And so pretty much immediately I signed up for FP1. And I also signed up for FP2, which I hope to do later um, in the year, maybe in a few months. Um, and I will make a video on that too. Um, it is much more difficult. Obviously there's two textbooks, one exam. So that's fun. But anyways, for FP1, lovely one lovely textbook. That's all, that's all it is. And it's honestly pretty short. And also I find like the fonts are pretty big too. Um, and there's one exam, 80 questions. You get three hours, which is outrageous. That is way too much time. I took about an hour and 15 minutes. I probably could have done it, you know, shorter, but I just wanted to kind of take my time, make sure I didn't kind of miss anything. Um, also, which is really great, since I did the CSC, they've changed how they're uh, conducting exams. So a lot of things have changed when it comes to the exam. For instance, so back in the fall, I had to do the exam in person, uh, which was super, that adds a layer of stress. You're already stressed because of the exam and you wanna pass and you, I particularly needed to pass because if I didn't, then my license was going to expire. So I'd have to spend like $1,500 or something crazy to buy the course again, which I really didn't wanna do. Um, and then you're in this, you know, kind of office during COVID with your mask on for several hours with all these other people. Um, and as safe as it kind of was still, like we're in a pandemic, it's not super great. Luckily, the CSI figured, hey, let's figure out how we can offer online proctoring. And I would highly recommend that. I honestly will never do, if I can, I will only ever do online proctoring. Not only do you have just like the, doing it in the comfort of your own home. And honestly, when I did the Accredited Financial Counselor Canada program several years ago, and that was like a program that had two exams, both were online, such a nice experience. It really just makes 
you know, it just, it's just nice. It's just nice. It's comfortable. I'm in my comfortable home. Uh, you know, I can set the temperature. It's never, oh, why are exam places always so freaking cold? Like, what is that about? Anyway, so I would highly recommend doing the online proctoring as opposed to going to an exam center. Personally, that's just my personal opinion. Also, and I don't know whether they've changed this for if you do uh, the exam at the, you know, location or whatever, but how the exam is laid out, the online kind of thing, it was different than what it looked like when I did the CSE. Again, I don't know if they updated it for all exams, but it was so much easier. There's ways where you can highlight parts of the um, questions so you can like really hone in on like, what's the important thing I need to remember. You can strike out certain um, answers. So, you, Cause you know, I usually do that when writing, you have a piece of paper and you're like, okay, it's A, B, C, it's definitely not A, it's definitely not C, then it's between B and D. Um, there, you can do that within the exam itself. So there's a a lot of great benefits of doing it online and also it's just like a better experience so did that online such a great experience um uh and they give you like all the information that you need in order to prepare like there's like a video tutorial on how the system works so definitely make sure to actually read the email you get from the CSI on how to prepare for the exam because that will again alleviate some stress and anxiety um, but otherwise it's pretty you know straightforward um so i'm just going to share the things that i found the most important for you if you were also going to be doing this program and taking the exam. So, cause it's all fresh in my mind and I don't want to forget anything and I want to give you the goods. So number one important thing I'm just remembering, unfortunately the exam is not like sequential. Whereas I found when I did the CSC, um, it was, you know, how the textbooks were kind of outlined by section, like, you know, okay, this is going to be about bonds. It's going to be about derivatives. Nah, it, it wasn't like that for the exam. They just put all the questions in all places to try to confuse you. So, you know, sometimes you'd start with a, a budgeting question and then go all the way to taxation and then go to about, you know, a question on wills and power of attorney. It was just all over the place. So just remember, it's not organized how the textbook is just be aware of that. So in terms of how the exam is weighted, um, you can find all that information on the website, which I'll show you right now. So as you can see, um, managing the financial planning process is 20%, budgeting, consumer lending, and mortgages is 15%, taxation is 15%, investments is 15%, retirement is 10%, wills and power of attorney, 15%, risk management, and life insurance is 10%. So there's really not too many sections that um, kind of you know, are the, the most important section. As you can see, I guess, budgeting, taxation, investments, those are kind of like the big ones. But when I was taking the exam, it didn't actually feel like they were present more than other sections, if that makes sense. Um, I felt like it was pretty organized. Oh yeah, well, it says managing the financial planning process 20%. Is that true? I guess, I didn't really feel like there was that many questions on that. Or maybe it's because that part, like especially that part of the textbook, is so easy it was like okay that's fine i'm sure i got most of those questions right because it is really just talking about you know what to do not to do as a financial advisor like don't just sell products actually give advice and listen to your you know clients and really you know uh think about their goals like it's really in my mind obvious stuff so you'll breeze through that part um i guess the section that i probably struggled with the most if i like again it really wasn't that bad I'd probably say taxation just because there are quite a few things to memorize, right? There's lots of rules. Um, there's lots of percentages. Um, one thing that I will tell you that I remember that was on the exam, and I actually, this isn't about taxation, but I, I just remembered it. Um, I think this is more investments or retirement planning. Um, it, there was a question, and again, it may not be on your exam because I don't know how much they freshen up the questions, but it was on TFSA dollar limits. So. If you don't have those memorized for every single year from 2009, well, you know, you're gonna not get that question right, like me. I guarantee you, if I got it right, that would have been a miracle. Because basically, I could not remember in what year the TFSA dollar limit was $10,000. It was one of the years Harper was in government. I was trying to do the math. I'm like, when did Trudeau get it? I couldn't. I couldn't remember. So got that question wrong, but that was a question that may come up. So memorize our TSA dollar limits. I will say, even though again, there's those weightings and it says that wills and power of attorney was only 15%, I felt like there were a lot of questions 
about that ad insurance. And I guess that takes up 25% of the exam, but honestly, I felt like that was a lot of the questions. So for, for me though, I actually really, really enjoyed those sections and I think you will too. I found it fascinating, quite honestly. Again, I'm a huge nerd, so that is that is what it is. But um, so definitely focus on those sections. Um, I think probably I, I thought those were the most interesting because Again, investments in retirement, like I already know all that stuff from doing the CSC from, I mean, I built my own investment course that I sell to my, you know, audience. So in, if you're interested, if you're interested for your own self, but again, you may not be because you're, you know, gonna be a financial planner. I'll link to it below. It's called Wealth Building Blueprint for Canadians. So I already knew that stuff. So when I was learning about the wills and, and risk management and all that kind of stuff, I found it just fascinating because it was something different. Um, and then the budgeting and you know lending, mortgages, I'm like, I already know this stuff. This is pretty basic stuff. So a lot of it's pretty basic. You may already know this stuff. Uh, investments, retirement, you'll already know most of that from doing the CSC. And you may learn something new when it comes to wills and estate planning and all that kind of stuff. Now, I always get this question about uh, formulas, calculations, how much math was there? I'll say I probably picked up my calculator, I don't know, for four or five questions, maybe. And um, I actually didn't really memorize any formulas because I, you know, I did all the quizzes and the practice exams and um, they didn't, you know, there really wasn't that much of it. And whenever there was a question like that, you can kind of figure out, you know, doing simple math or doing your own weird math to try to find the answer, you can kind of figure it out. So I honestly, if there are formulas, it, that should not be your focus because I, I feel like I talked a lot about this for the CSE exam too. It's really about concepts and understanding, um, yeah, the concepts. It's not about formulas or mathematics. It really is just about understanding kind of the crux of the situation and really putting yourself in the position of a financial planner um, to understand what your role is and what you need to, you know, be able to explain to a customer or to a client. So I think that's hopefully helpful for you, but really don't focus too much on formulas. There's maybe a few, but you don't really need to worry about it. So some things that I did notice in the exam, especially taking, I took just one of the practice exams through the CSI. I didn't take the second one. I ran out of time, uh, but it did do all of the different activities and quizzes. Um, there really wasn't that much on pensions and I was expecting a lot more on pensions, maybe because there were quite a few questions on pensions in the first practice test. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a lot on that. There definitely were questions on different types of um, uh, investment risk. So again, you'll probably already remember a lot of that from the CSC, but they do talk about it in here. So, you know, get a little refresher. But again, those those questions will be a breeze for you if you did the CSC. Um, but also uh, risk in terms of insurance. Um, and now I feel like even though I just did the exam, I'm like, could I tell you off the top of my head the different types of insurance risk? Absolutely not. Is literally in one ear, out the other, once I pass the exam. Okay, so it talks about, actually, no, there wasn't a question on like pure risk, speculative risk, subjective risk, objective risk. There wasn't a question on that. I was surprised by that and a bit pissed because I did memorize all those. There were actual questions on loss control techniques. So definitely remember those. So uh, loss avoidance, loss prevention, loss reduction, also risk retention, active and passive. That was, I think there was definitely a question on that. Um, let's see. There was a question on direct loss and indirect loss. I'm not, did I get that right? I think I got it right. Okay, good. Um, legal liability. Did I get that? There was a question where one of the answers was legal liability about like, if you're a doctor and, uh, you, you know, perform surgery and the you know patient dies, what kind of, you know, risk is that? I think so. Yes. Alleged malpractice. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so that's definitely something to think about. Um, but let's see, what else was on the exam that would be so helpful for you to know? Um, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, going back, you re just really memorizing the stuff from life insurance and estate planning um, and taxation. Taxation was, um, I'm sure I got some of those questions wrong. I mean, <laughs> I just, I don't know. And what's so frustrating too, is like you finish the exam, you get a pass and fail right after, which is like a nice relief, but they'll give you your grade, but they, there's no way to find out what you got wrong. And I know that's normal for exams, but wouldn't it be helpful and educational for us to know what we got wrong? So then we can memorize the right answers. Like, wouldn't that be helpful for us learning to become financial planners? Don't you think? 
just something to think about. Okay, so um, it says on the website that it'll take you about 70 to 90 hours to study. I certainly did not take that long. I definitely read the entire textbook. And again, I did spend time doing all of the quizzes and activities um, inside the, the CSI portal, but I did not spend 70 to 90 hours. I probably spent 25 maybe. And again, it comes down to like, I already knew a lot of this stuff. Like a lot of this curriculum was very similar to the financial counselor program that I already took. Um, so maybe you will take longer and that is okay. It really doesn't matter how long you take because no one will know unless you also plan on making a YouTube video and sharing that. Who gives a crap? Do whatever makes sense for you. For me though, I studied as much as I could and I did feel like if someone asked me a question, I could pro like, if, like I took again, like lots of the different quizzes and I always got really, you know, pretty good scores. So I felt pretty confident going in, but I also didn't want to like really burn myself out studying for this exam because I knew I have more exams like FP2, I know is going to be harder. Somehow it's like a 60 question exam, but there's two textbooks, which means there's less areas for you to mess up while taking the exam. So I kind of wanted to like preserve my energy and brain power for that. And uh, yeah, not kind of waste all my energy on this. And so that would be another tip I have for you. Um, don't kill yourself with this um, textbook, this exam. It's really not as bad as you think. It's gonna be pretty easy. Um, so don't, it's, you know, we all know this. It's really just about passing. Who gives a crap really what your grade is? No one's really gonna ask. So just focus on passing you know, reading the entire textbook, doing all the activities and making sure you take the practice exams and then you get pretty good scores and you can learn from your different mistakes, but otherwise you'll pretty much be fine. It's really, really not that bad. And then you'll be able to move on with your life and, you know, go on to the next course. And so it feels just so good to be able to finish this, check it off my list and, uh, you know, look forward to the next thing. Cause you know, the CFP is not uh, an easy road. It's gonna take me some time. And so it's nice to have this as one less thing that I have to worry about. So hopefully this video has been helpful, but I know, and you know, from doing the CSC uh, video, you're gonna have questions and I'm happy to answer. Now, what I will say, please put them in the, the comments for this video. It's just easy for me to organize. You can of course email me. I may take a little bit longer to get back to you. And if you do have an email that's asking me or, or a comment asking me, how do I get a job as a financial planner or in the financial services you know, industry, I unfortunately cannot help you because I don't work in the financial services industry. I run my own business. I'm I'm an independent, you know, gal running my own show. I have no idea how to get a job at a bank or an investment firm. I have no idea. So I am not the person to give you an answer. I'm sorry. So what I would probably recommend is, you know, uh, if there's anyone you know who does work in that industry, you know, ask them some questions or see if they know anyone else who would be open to mentoring you or, or having, you know, a, a nice Zoom chat or something like that. But unfortunately, I don't know how to get a job in financial services, even though I was studying financial services. So that's that. Sorry, I cannot help you with your questions. Um, but I, I really love getting all your different uh, comments and everything like that. So make sure to uh, share them in the comments or, or, you know, send me a DM or whatever. Another thing I'd like to open up, uh, if you do pass the CSE or if you do pass this FP1, since I've made videos on them and I've personally passed them too, sometimes it's nice to share the love or share, um, you know, your accomplishments. Sometimes you, you'll do an exam you're like, no one actually cares. My family, my friends, they don't care. So tell me. So, you know, if you pass any of those exams, put them in the comments, let me know. And then I'll give you a nice, you know, congratulations and thumbs up because, um, you know, we're in a, a bit of a, a niche situation here. So I want to say you rock because you do rock. This is a lot of work that you're, you're doing on top of you know, your day job, or if maybe you're in school for something else. So let me know if you pass. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Make sure to like it. If you liked it, comment below, um, and subscribe. Of course, don't forget to subscribe subscribe to my channel. Um, of course, you know, make sure to take a look at that other video I mentioned, and I guess soon I'll be studying for FP2 and I will have an updated video for you all about that. But basically it looks like it's the same kind of content, just a little bit more expanded, a little bit more in depth. So excited to kind of crack open those textbooks <laughs> ah, because I'm going to be stuck in this house 
clearly forever. Um, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in my next video.